Rational functions again, more graphing. Today, part three, where we're going to look at oblique asymptotes. This is part of section 5.2, 5.3 in the Advanced Functions Nelson book. So um, I want to remind you again to please subscribe to my channel. I'm looking for a thousand subscribers. If I get that many, then I will consider doing the um, Calculus and Vectors course for you as well. Okay, so let's get down to some business here. Um, this handout is available for you. I will put the link to it as well. And you can download it and follow along. And also you can use it to do some of the graphing before I do it as well. Or you can practice and, and follow along while I take it up. So the key here is that the degree of f of x, so the degree in the, the, the numerator, is going to be one more than the degree in the denominator. One more. So that means like an x squared over an x or an x cubed over an x squared. Okay, so just one more in the top. So now we've looked at three different types. One where the degree was less in the numerator than the denominator, where it was the same, and now where it's just one more. Those were all in part one and two in my videos. Okay, so we're looking for, there's no horizontal asymptote. You can't have both oblique and horizontal. The slant asymptote is going to be the equation of a line in the form of y equals mx plus b. There are still two types of vertical asymptotes, odd and even, which we've gone over ad nauseum. And the graph often, often crosses the oblique asymptote for finite values of x. So that just means as x approaches infinity, your function is going to approach the oblique asymptote. So we have single roots with an oblique asymptote. And you know what a single root is. So let's move this up a little bit so you can see here. So in this graph, we had x squared minus 1 over x. This is an x. There's some kind of little squidgly here thing that we, that's a funny word, isn't it? Made it up. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to find the equation of the line that's going to uh, be your oblique asymptote. So first you check the degree is one more than the denominator, and then you divide each term by what's in the denominator. Now, that's quite a legitimate mathematical technique. If, for instance, I had um, 2 plus 3 over 4, you could say that's 2 over 4 plus 3 over 4, right? So I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just dividing each of the terms by what's in the denominator. So I have x squared over x, which is x, and minus 1 over x. Now, the equation you see here is y equals x. What happened to this? Well, what happens is as x approaches infinity, and they should write this down, and, and I will when I do some of the examples below. So as x approaches infinity, 1 over x is going to approach 0. So if I divide 1 by a billion, it's going to be a very small number. So this part becomes um, insignificant to the equation of the line. We're only looking at y equals this part, x. So this is a graph that has, um, in the denominator, it has a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. And you can see that it's a degree of 1. So the function is going in different directions. It's an odd vertical asymptote. And this one here, this had two single roots as well. The single roots came from the numerator here, x squared minus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve for x would give you plus and minus 1. Therefore, those two single roots. Um, this one, a little more challenging. You have lots of stuff going on here. So you would have a single root when x is minus 2, a double root when x is 1 because it's squared. You'd have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And again, you would need to find the equation of the oblique or slant asymptote. So in order to do that for this question, and I will do an example, this example C down here when I get to it, you'll see what we do. But Basically, you have to expand the numerator and divide each term by the denominator. So they ended up with this. 
and as x approaches infinity this again is going to approach zero so you're left with the asymptote of y equals x now it's not always y equals x it might look like that right now but i'll do an example of something that isn't okay so graph the following functions using the method of single roots double roots triple roots even an odd vertical asymptote, the so direction towards the oblique asymptote. That's kind of OAO. And you can cross the oblique asymptote. Okay, so let's get to work on these. So here's the first one here. We have y equals x squared plus 1 over x. So we want to find the oblique asymptote. And again, you're not going to be told it's an oblique asymptote, so you have to look at the degree. So this is squared over x, so this is one more than this one. So it's going to be an oblique asymptote. So that means that this is also equal to the following. x squared over x plus 1 over x. And x squared over x, you can simplify to this. Okay, so then I would say... As x approaches infinity, 1 over x approaches 0. Therefore, the OA, oblique asymptote, is y equals x. So this became 0 here, right? Okay, so I'm going to put in my oblique asymptote. I'm just going to estimate it here. y equals x, beautifully, 45 degree angle through there. And... We look to the numerator now. So I have x squared plus 1 equals 0. This is to find to find the x-intercepts, right? What are the x-intercepts? So I set that equal to 0, and I would have x squared equals negative 1. Now, don't be fooled. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, no x-intercepts. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I have a vertical asymptote, I know that, and that's going to be x equals 0. In other words, what made the denominator 0, right? So I'll put my other dotted line here. You should label these y equals x, x equals 0. Now we need to find out where my graph is going to be. Basically, it's in these quadrants here. And I'm going to show you how you can find that out for sure. But you know, you have to, you can never cross a vertical asymptote and you have to approach the, the line y equals x as x approaches positive and negative infinity. So if I put in a value, let's say, um, let's say I do one. When I put in x equals one, one, one is going to be on this graph, right? It's going to be on this line, this oblique asymptote. So if I put in 1 here, I would have 1 squared plus 1 is 2 divided by 1 is 2. So I have 1, 2. This is my point on the graph. This is my point on the line. And because I'm bound by this vertical asymptote and this oblique asymptote, there's where my graph is going to be. Now I can do the same thing for negative 1. Negative 1 would be on this line here, of course, negative 1 and negative 1. And if I put a negative 1 here, I would have 1 plus 1 is 2 over negative 1 is negative 2. So I'm like here again, negative 2, and I have this asymptote, this one. And there you go. Okay, let's move on to the next graph here. We have y equals x minus 1 in brackets squared over x. So in order to find the oblique asymptote, I'm going to need to expand the numerator. So I'm going to square my binomial, square the first term, twice the product of the two terms, and square the last term, divided by x. Hopefully you learned that little square twice the product squared somewhere in your life. And I'm going to divide each term by x. That's going to give me x minus 2 plus 1 over x. So I divided each term by an x. And again, as x approaches infinity, 
1 over x approaches 0. Therefore, the oblique asymptote is y equals x minus 2 this time. So I'm left with this. This becomes 0. Okay, the asymptote x minus 2 is a line with positive slope. It's just shifted down two units. So like this. And the vertical asymptote, it's in the denominator x equals 0. What makes the denominator 0? And I put another dotted line here. So this is going to be my x equals 0. And this is going to be y equals x minus 2. Okay, I've got all my asymptotes on and my pencil rolled away. And now I need to find out, um, are there any x-intercepts? So what makes this equal to 0? And you would say 1. x-intercept is 1. So it's going to cross right here. Okay, so I have these boundaries with my, my asymptotes. This is one here. Now the question is, where am I going to go from here? Does it go below if I went here? Is it going to come down a bit or is this the lowest point? But I do know that it's going to go up here somehow. So because this is a double root, right, a double root, it means it's just going to touch it. So if I come down like this, then it's going to have to go back like this. So if you plugged in, um, I don't know, something, this is x minus 2, so this would be 2 here. So it would have to be something between 1 and 2. You could see that it's going to start approaching this way. And because this is an odd asymptote, it's going to go down on this side. I'm going to pick another point here. Let's say negative 1, just so I have an idea of where it's going to be down here. So negative 1 minus 1 squared is 4 and negative 4. So minus 1 and negative 4, uh, 2, 3, 4. So it's about here. And this is going to go around like that. And there you go. Okay, so let's go to this question here. x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared over x squared. So again, you would have to do a little bit of math to expand this. And you should see right away that I would have something cubed in the numerator over something squared, therefore oblique asymptote. Okay, so you have to keep asking yourself, what are the degrees here? What am I dealing with? So I'm going to expand this. I'm going to square this binomial squared twice the product squared all over x squared. And then I have to expand this. So I have x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Gather your like terms. And I'm going to have 1x cubed uh, minus 1x squared plus 1 minus 2 is minus x plus 1 all over x squared. Okay, so now that I've expanded it, I can divide by the denominator to find the oblique asymptote. You could use long division if you want to, but it's much easier in this case to just put each term I'll do it the long way this time. So you're going to put each term divided by the denominator like this and <clears throat> you're going to simplify. So x cubed divided by x squared is x. x squared divided by x squared that's minus 1 and this is going to be 1 over x and 1 over x squared. So again, you should make a statement that as x approaches infinity, minus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared is going to approach 0. And that's because I'm dividing by something very big here and very big squared here. So all of this part just becomes one big 0. 
And so that means y equals x minus 1 is the oblique asymptote. So it's important that you do your division properly. And now here I'm going to draw a nice line. That would be my line of y equals x minus 1. I'll move that up in a second here. I guess I can move it up now. Okay, so um, we need to know where is the vertical asymptote. And again, it's in the denominator here. And that would be x equals 0. So I put that on my graph as well. x equals 0. What are my x-intercepts? So we have two x-intercepts. Remember, you're setting all of this equal to 0. So what makes this bracket 0? So x-intercepts are um, negative 1. Negative 1 and this one is 1. So negative 1 is a, a single root. Single root because it has a degree of 1. And this one would be a double root. So um, that would be positive 1, which is a double root. Remember, a double root means you go down, you touch the x-axis, and you go back up. Okay, so I'm going to put those onto my graph here. Negative 1 is a single root. So that means I'm going to pass through here. And what is this point right here? Well, that would be 1, wouldn't it? Because if I put in 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is a double root right here. Okay, so I know I'm going to come down this way. I'm going to touch here. And I'm going to, the question is, am I going to be under here? Or am I going to come back over top of it? So we need to make some decision about that. Now the, the, the vertical asymptote, we should have stated that, x equals 0, is an even asymptote. Even. Even asymptote means same direction. So if this is going up here, it has to also be going up on this side. They have to match. Remember, even. It's going to come down through here. It's going to pass through minus 1, and it's going to approach this asymptote. Now, you can try some numbers if you want. Um, if you plugged in, I don't know, say negative 100 and did all this math here, and then put a negative 100 here, so you could see if you were above or below. Okay, I'm going to do that on this side, so I'll show you what I mean. So I need to know, does this come back up and go this way, or does it approach from underneath? So I'm going to try, um, let's say, f at 100. So that would give me 101 times, I'm putting in 100, so that's 99 squared. And in the denominator, I have 100 squared. So that's going to tell me what the value of this graph is going to be, the graph itself, not the asymptote. What's the asymptote value? So this is, I'm going to write that over top. This is the graph or the function. And the other one is going to be the asymptote. So the asymptote um, at 100 is going to be 99. Right? If I put in 100 here, I'm going to have 99. But what value do I get when I do this? So this calls in, I've got to call in the big guns here because I can't do all that in my head. Whoops, go here. So I have 101 times 99 squared and then divided by 100 squared and I get 98.9901 approximately. Okay, so you can see that this value is just below 99. So that means that I'm going to be under the asymptote. So sometimes some of the exercises will ask you if you're going to be approaching this um, slant asymptote from above or below. And this is the work that you would have to do to find that. Okay, we need to talk about holes. You did holes in grade 11. Um, 
it says that if when you check for a vertical asymptote, the value that denominator equals zero also makes the numerator equal to zero, then you have a hole in the graph at that value. So we need to know how to deal with those when we're sketching our graphs. So I've got two little examples here. Um, the first one, you can see that if I put in negative two here for the vertical asymptote, that would also make a zero in the numerator. Okay, so I'd have zero over zero. So f at negative two would be zero over zero. And you're going to look at this in calculus as well. This means you need to do more work. In other words, you need to do some factoring and simplify. So more work needed, just what you want to hear, right? Okay, so I do know how to factor a difference of squares, and that's x plus 2 times x minus 2. I don't need to go over that with you, I'm certain, if you're here. And you can see that this is going to cancel out. Now, it's not that you've gotten rid of it, but what it does mean is that you're going to be graphing y equals x minus 2. That's what this simplifies to. So I'm just making a quick sketch here. Oops, it's not going to be beautiful like my other work. So x minus 2, that's a line like this, right? Actually, it's a solid line. But... When we plugged in negative 2 here, we got a 0. So that means negative 2 cannot be in the domain of this function, right? It can't be in the domain because it's, it makes the denominator 0. We don't have a vertical asymptote because it's simplified to this. But where x is minus 2, we are going to have a hole in the graph. So you need to identify that with a little circle, an open circle. Now, you should be able to tell me what the coordinates of this hole are. So I know it's negative 2. And what is the y value? Just plug it in here. Minus 2, minus 2 is minus 4. So this is where the hole is. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Okay, so that's when it divides out and leaves you this in the numerator. But what happens if you divide out and it leaves you something in the denominator? And that's what we're going to look at right now. So I have x plus 1, and in the denominator, I have a difference of squares again. x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now remember that in order for you to divide something from numerator and denominator, it has to be in a little house. Okay? These are little packages. Um, so many times I see students dividing like an x into this one. Ooh, no, 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 no. It makes your blood cringe. Okay, so make sure you factor it first and take out the package deal here, little family. And I'm left with 1 over x minus 1. What does 1 over x minus 1 look like? Well, oh, that's a really bad line. I'm sorry. Um, it has a vertical asymptote when x is 1. And what this graph is, is actually the graph of 1 over x shifted to the right one unit. You know that. What is the horizontal asymptote? Well, that would be y equals 0, just like the graph of 1 over x. So remember 1 over x? It just looked like this, right? Two asymptotes, one here, one here. So same thing here. Except, oops, I better undot this one. So there's my two asymptotes, and the graph is over here. But what am I missing? Well, um, let's find the y-intercept here, negative 1, right? So what I'm missing here, though, is that we canceled this out. Negative 1 is not in the domain for this function. So I need to know what happens at negative 1. Plug in negative 1 here, because this is now the graph that you've graphed. This graph here is 1 over x minus 1. I put in negative 1, and I get negative 1 half. So this point here is my hole. So it's minus 1, minus 1 half is the hole for this graph. Okay, so hopefully that was all in view for you. And um, 
only one more thing to talk about uh, for graphing rational functions. You're going to say, but what happens if the numerator is greater than 1? Let's say I had something like y equals x to the fourth over x squared, but there were other stuff with it here just to make it more complicated. And you should know that um, this is going to grow much faster. So as x approaches infinity, this function will approach infinity. If it had a negative in front, like if I had negative, so this approaches infinity. And if I had y equals negative x to the fourth over x squared, then this would approach negative infinity. That's all. Okay, so it's not it's not that complicated. It's just that these numbers in the numerator are so much bigger than the numbers in the denominator. Or you could even see this would divide out if that's all there was here. Um, so you you need to know the um, that that's the way it works when they're the numerator has a much greater degree. Okay, so that covers everything on rational functions, on sketching them. Um, we have a little more difficult work ahead of us in um, chapter five, and we'll get to that very soon. Please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Bye for now.